Smith Wigglesworth went from the humble beginnings of a stuttering, shy plumber to a man who fearlessly punched tumors in front of thousands of people and was completely unfazed when the tumor fell off to the shock and awe of the crowd. Then he would turn and rebuke the crowd for even being surprised that God would do such a thing for the people he loved so much. His boldness was extraordinary. God showed up around this man. One of the missions of this channel is to revive the church. So why do we need revival? In this video, I'm going to shortly share with you the biggest problem in the church and how we can solve it through revival. And I'm going to share with you a prophetic word Smith Wigglesworth spoke about the coming worldwide revival. And within his prophecy is a profound principle that gives us the key to unlocking revival. So stay with me to the end. Why do we desperately need revival right now? Because of dead religion. We need revival and we see this revealed in the ministry of Jesus. Jesus wept over Jerusalem. He wept over what became of the people of God. Jerusalem found themselves in the clutches of dead religion. The people of God became the anti-God people. How did this happen? Jesus declared in Luke 13, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. What? The people of God became the ones who killed the very messengers that God sent to them. This is what dead religion does to the church. The people of God become resistant to what God is doing and saying. The church right now is sick with dead religion. The church started by the power of the Holy Spirit, but over time we tend to lose it. We lose the fire and another spirit takes the place of the Holy Spirit. The result is that those whom God sends to turn things around gets killed or persecuted, rejected, reviled. The people of Jerusalem literally killed the Son of God by crucifying Him. They killed God. That's what happens when we lose our way. Dead religion slams the door in God's face saying, you're not welcome here. And yet they still thought they were worshiping God. Jesus said to the religious leaders, you shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. He was furious with them that they were keeping people away from God. Revival is the answer to dead religion. Revival breaks down that door that has been shut to the kingdom of God. Revival shakes the church when God breaks out and causes hearts to turn back to Him. Jesus says, how often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers a brood under her wings and you were not willing, not willing. Hard hearts inhibits us from a deep desire for more of God. They were not willing to embrace what Jesus did and wrote him off as one who does miracles by the power of demons. How absurd. And yet that is what they did. Dead religion causes us to make excuses for rejecting the power of God. It leads to a powerless church. You might think, I would never do something like that. I would never become like those terrible Pharisees. Truth is, every one of us has it in us to become like them. It just takes a hard heart or an indifferent or disillusioned heart. I was a pastor of a church and in full-time ministry for almost 10 years. And I was at first resistant to the move of the Spirit. I was not willing to go where God was wanting to take me until the Lord rebuked me for the pride in my heart. No one is immune to the spirit of dead religion. Yet revival is the solution. The end of dead religion is, as Jesus said, Behold, your house is forsaken. The end is a dead church, a people with a form of godliness, but God is not in the house. Leonard Ravenhill said that revival is when God gets so sick and tired of being misrepresented that He shows up Himself. And we saw this in the life of Jesus. God was wholly misrepresented by the religious leaders in Israel, and so He showed up in the flesh. Revival is when God shows up tangibly. And Jesus came to kick down that door of dead religion so that His people can be revived. And He's still doing it today. 
Do we need revival? Yes. How do we access revival? Well, Smith Wigglesworth prophesied about the coming worldwide revival. He said, when the Word and the Spirit come together, there will be the biggest move of the Holy Spirit that the nations and indeed the world has ever seen. It will mark the beginning of a revival that will eclipse anything that has been in former years. Revival is coming. And the key to this revival that will shake the nations is when the Word and the Spirit people come together. Some parts of the church are more focused on God's Word. Other parts are more focused on the working of the Spirit. The key to revival is when both sides humble themselves sufficiently to embrace the other side. The full fivefold ministry gifts need to be embraced. You see, both the teachers, pastors, who tend to be more the word people, and the apostolic prophetic people who tend to be more focused on the manifestation of the Spirit, they need to take hands. Humility is the path to revival. When we discover our need for the different gifts in the body of Christ, and the word camp and the Spirit camp come together, there will be the biggest move of the Holy Spirit ever. So let's pursue revival. The Lord has set before you and me an open door. Let's walk through it. Let's humble ourselves. Let's not become like the Pharisees of old, but rather allow revival to break down that door of dead religion. I hope you understand now why we desperately need revival. In the next video, part two in the series, I will share more of what revival is. If you want more content like this, subscribe and follow. If you want to discover your fivefold gifting and wiring and in which camp you tend to lean into, then check out the fivefold ministry test at kingdomunleashed.net. The link is in the description. So how's your heart? Would Jesus say that you were not willing? Are you making excuses for not pursuing the power of the Holy Spirit? Or do you have a soft, hungry, humble heart for more of God? Let's pursue it. Set some time aside today and seek the Lord through prayer. Let's revive the church.